You know, I think all of us over our lives develop lots of different skill sets, but we all know privately that there's one or two that really is your sweet spot, your strength. And I think um, whether you call it pattern recognition or whatever it might be, I would say mine is vision in the sense that, um, you know, I wrote a book, We First, that, you know, articulated a vision, a sustainable practice of capitalism and where marketing and branding was going. And that to me was an experience in um, an ability to look at a lot of disparate facts and a lot of sort of shifts and a lot of complexity and distill it down into, you know, um, simple explanations and storytelling that made the future look a lot more accessible. So I like to think that, you know, as a combination of my life journey and, and, and gifts that I got from my parents or anything else and the experience I had on the way, that vision might be the thing that I'm, I'm strongest at. I was at a loss professionally and I walked into my kitchen one morning here in Los Angeles and there was on the white tile countertop was the answering machine. We had answering machines back then. And uh, I pressed the answering machine button and there were five messages. One from my mother saying, Simon, please wake up. Another from my mother, Simon, you've got to wake up, please wake up. The third one from my sister, practically, you know, screaming down the phone. The fourth one from my mother, you know, very distraught. And the last one from my mother who said, Simon, dad died. You know, he wanted to say goodbye. Uh, call us when you wake up. And those words, call us when you wake up, had a true uh, profundity, a, a resonance with me because I think I hadn't seen him for five years because I've been traveling around the world doing self-important things that I can't even remember right now. And so interestingly enough, the person who shaped my life the most is someone who's passed, who is my father, who I feel closer to now every day now that he's gone because it informs who I am and what I do on a daily basis. A ritual that I do is, is gratitude in the morning. When I wake up, when I'm still like, oh my God, can I not sleep for another 15 minutes or whatever it might be? Um, I run through in my mind three things that I'm grateful for. And it's a very common ritual, but it's a very powerful way to frame how you look at the world and the roles and responsibilities you've crafted for yourself on that day. You know, as a brand guy, I greatly admire that um, statement that someone said that everyone should live their life uh, in accordance with whatever words they want on their tombstone. And, you know, when I was at a loss with the passing of my father and being professionally at a loss and was looking for greater meaning in my own life and sort of developed this vision of the sustainable practice of capitalism and, and so on, um, I really struggled as a brand guy to distill my own message. Why am I here? What's my purpose? How do I articulate that? Because for all of us, it's really hard to read the label from inside the jar. It's almost impossible. But ultimately, I distilled it down to two words, we first, which is really giving a priority to the collective interest. And the reason I chose that is quite strategic in the sense that it's a very economical distillation of what would otherwise be a complex concept and it's very shareable. It is a counterpoint to me first, which is such a known quantity and informs so much of the global economic meltdown in 2008 and just a way of being in the world, whether you're a consumer or, consumer or whether you're a, a brand who's just profit for profit's sake. Um, and then, so if I was to think, how would I like to be remembered? I'd like to be remembered with a tombstone that, that says, we first. And for my time here to serve as a moderately loud voice in the choir of change that is so responsible for raising the roof right now in terms of creating a future not just that we want for ourselves but you know for the planet and, and for the children that will inhabit it so we first on a tombstone there we go